probably not as fun as it plays as but she's going to the stadium to meet the office. So uh, I appreciate the friends that have this. It was a pleasure. I've been asked for the record, Bill Miller. I've been asked to uh, come before you. I just represent White Pine County Cab on this issue. And the issue is Cummings Lake. Uh, I'll bring it before you tomorrow, but I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Cummings Lake, there was a town hall meeting the other night, and uh, staff presented, and the uh, EP was here and presented the cases of mercury. Uh, the cases were brought up. Uh, Pike in the lake and the dam was briefly talked about. I've been involved with Cummins Lake for over 20 years. In the mid 2000s, especially in 2004, that was one of the premier trout fisheries in the western United States. Um, pike were introduced and that lake has been destroyed. Uh, it's been seven years now uh, since we've heard of the mercury and the pike. The dam issue has been around since I know I went to a meeting in 1994 with the Department of Transportation and trying to discuss the issues of how we go to raise the dam and different alternatives. Um, there's been a lot of talk about a lot of items. Uh, three items mainly are, are the dam, the mercury, and the pipe. And we've all discussed what we're going to do, but nothing has come to fruition. And I attended that meeting the other night, and I, I expected and I anticipated, like the rest of the public that was here, there was 50 or 60 people here that attended that town hall meeting, and we expected answers to where we're going. And I was frustrated. There were three county commissioners in attendance. It is very important that we get that lake back up to the status that it is, the potential that that lake possesses. I've gone... Uh, this coming Wednesday, I've placed, along with uh, County Commissioner Lori Carson, an agenda item to go before the White Pine County Commissioners and ask them if they would form an ad hoc committee of local people with interests and background knowledge to assist and our staff and other groups to see what we can do to get this thing opened up to the public. Uh, Tomorrow there will be a gentleman here that's our chief, our director of our economic diversification. And the following day he done some research. And I can't tell you how many millions, I thought it was $7 million, $10 million, to assist in this Cummings Lake project that NDAL can apply for to help them uh, mitigate these issues. So I want to tell you that this lake, you asked before, I appreciate uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner McBeth. This is a very important um, renewable resource that's available to White Pine County. In 2004, over $2 million in anglers' money came to White Pine County. And right now, there's less than $2,000. $2 million is a lot of money. If we're going to spend $10 million, we can recoup those costs in just a few years. So, not getting into too much depth, but just that that is one of the hot spots for White Pine County. You couldn't launch a boat out there for all the people. You go out there today, and I'm, I'll bet you I was out there last week, and I saw two boats. The pike that are coming off there now, they're only about that long. They're very, very skinny. Uh, I don't know how many years ago we took, took pike off the game fish species list four or five years ago. So we need to we need to get the ball rolling. I think by establish this ad hoc committee, work with Endow staff and the commission uh, 
to get this thing opened up and uh, start drawing more people to White Pike County. I'll guarantee you there's a lot of people that don't even buy fishing licenses in White Pike County because between Bassett Lake and Cummings Lake, they're not, there's no more to fish. So it is very important that you back up uh, this initiative that it's going to be put before you and the county commissioners of White Pine County <coughs> to see that this lake's you know, taken care of and taken care of right. I have a question for you, Bill. When I was on the commission the last time, this was a this topic, and part of the problem we had with Cummins was Bassett was under private ownership, and we couldn't control the, the price issue at Bassett. Has it changed since then? I, I'm not up to speed on everything. There was a push uh, by Judge Lopez. Um, that was another ad hoc committee to purchase Bassett Lake from Kenny Cotton. And for once in all of these years, it was moving forward. And it was progressing. Uh, I wasn't in attendance at the last couple of meetings, but Judge Lopez was. And we had all the money. Uh, we went to Iowa. Firstly, before the Q1 board it came out of there with 1.4 million to assist in purchases. We had other people that were going to assist with those uh, dollars of match with Kenny Cotton, and it was all coming together. And because that purchase would be before state lands, it involved the NDEP. And they wanted a guarantee from Kenny Cotton that if any hard minerals ever showed up in that lake in the future, and this is my understanding, I, I could be wrong, but if any hard metals showed up in the future, that Kenny Cotton would come back and help with those problems. Kenny Cotton says, no, once we sell it to you, if anything happens in the future, that will become your problem, and the state did not want to take on that type of a liability. Right now, as I understand from what I've heard <coughs> from the Pindau's uh, fisheries people, that we still have to go ahead from Kenny Cotton, and I believe Jeff Patel still has the same contacts, that when it comes time to eradicate those pipes, any fish, all the fish, out of Bassett Lake at the same time as Cummings Lake, that we still have the green light. And we'll make sure that we do so in the next few weeks. Um, my understanding that there was a big issue there was there's streams leading in and out of, to Bassett Lake cover a large amount of private land, and there could be pike up in those to see the lake later. And that was like a lot of the private land issue. It wasn't necessarily Bassett Lake. It was all the streams that <coughs> contained pike. And, and, and was that addressed? And well, there, there are two types of inlets. There are some springs that feed into there. Um, and there's one outlet yeah. that does go on private ranching land. Um, the ranchers all in Fort Peace Valley. We don't have an issue with that. Ranch. That was discussed. But there are some streams that kind of feed the lake. And um, hopefully on a dry year we'll be able to we'll be able to plumb off those out. There's already Chris Crookshanks was here, he worked on this for years, and there was already a plan <coughs> in place talking with the new uh, fisheries biologist for White Pine County. And Chris Crookshanks already has a game plan ready, ready to go. So you can give us a green light and we'll go do it. So I think by having an ad hoc committee to help push this, help assist with and now or other organizations that we can see this thing getting done because I know the talk on the street is it's been seven years now, we've heard a lot of stuff and nothing's happening. So we want to put together an ad hoc committee and uh, with some motivation and some motivators, some people with some background this week, we can get this accomplished. I'm sure we'll hear a lot more about this tomorrow morning. For me, we're going to be here, so I'll make sure we get here Thank you for listening to me. For the record, Paul Dixon, Clark County Cap. Just to follow on to the discussion you're having on Cummins and Mercury, I do work for a contractor that works for the Department of Energy, and one of our sites, Oak Creek National Laboratory, has over four, almost five million ounces of lost mercury to the environment. And they're going to spend this next year about $400 million on methyl mercury and cleanup issues, and that will go on for an extended period of time to try to protect the water supply. My recommendation is, is that whatever ad hoc committee
committee works. I'd like to get involved and make sure that some of the resources or, or knowledge that's coming out of the Department of Energy in the cleanup of mercury and methyl mercury issues in the environment get parlayed to our much smaller issue here and hopefully make it a cost-effective way of dealing with what we have to deal with here. Um, and I think that that's a real possibility. But there's a lot of knowledge base, and I have some very good friends that are leading that effort at Oak Ridge right now, personal friends that would help if we ask. So just to follow on to that in the mercury issue, because that's always been a thing. And we may not have the expertise locally that we need, and it would be nice to pull in a greater national resource, since all your tax dollars are paying for it anyway, trust me. Uh, the other thing, in a Clark County cabin, I'd like to thank this commission for finally giving us the ability to have meetings where we can discuss things outside of your agenda <laughs> that are relevant to us. Um, at the meeting the other night, uh, I just wanted to thank Tony and the Department of Wildlife. Uh, Kirkland Wolf gave a, a PowerPoint presentation to the Clark County cab on the disease report for Nevada. It was very good. Uh, realized that she came off of doing sampling up in Lake Tahoe and called in, I think it was about 8.30 she called in for our meeting. We get over at night, but she gave a very nice 20 minute presentation and it was excellent and I, and I will probably do that on a more regular basis with her looking at some specific southern issues in, in the future coming. It was very nice, so please let her know that it was very much appreciated. Um, the other thing is, is that um, when we get to the trail camera thing, I'd like the commission to go back in and pull up. We had a fairly large discussion and Rob, you actually gave a presentation three years, four years ago on trail cams where we had and thought about this and all the issues that we talked about might be what ifs in the past are all coming to fruition because of the use of the cheapness of trail cameras and the fact that you have GPS trail cameras that tra can transmit now, that's been the real concern that we have going forward. And so I think that we have covered a lot of the concerns. We're just starting to focus around hunter ethics right now. And that's, I'm hoping that's where we end up in trail camera discussion going forward, at least my board does. And finally, I'd like to thank, again, Chris Zaccaro. I think I said your last name right. Mike. 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 Zaraj. Zaraj. Mike. Chris Close. This guy had it. Chris Close. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. He's saying, what are you saying? Thank you. I'm just saying thank you. Um, we have worked very closely over the last, oh, I would say, six to eight months on the conceptual management plan for Overton. And, uh, we have a product that's getting very close to final out. And I'm very pleased with that. It's the amount of public comment we're getting now and where it's focusing is, is really just some, some nits on what I consider to be a very solid plan. And uh, so I want to thank you guys for working very closely with Clark County guys on that because Overton is our big issue. And so those have been things that we've been able to do since you give agendas, starting with Commissioner McBeth that allowed me some free time in my limited window to actually talk about things other than your agenda. Comments came up at our recent advisory meeting regarding publishing of uh, meeting dates, locations, and agendas. Uh, we know well in advance when our meeting is going to be. The agenda doesn't get published until about three or four days prior to the meeting. Uh, so it's kind of difficult to get for the department, I think, to kind of get everything on the particular agenda, but at least it would be good if the website, the department's website, at least had meeting dates, locations, and times. Uh, we can, we do publish, when we do publish the agenda for the public, it is put on the Carson City, their own site. And we, you know, we've had comments on how easy that is to find or get through, dig down through their website, but I tried it and several other people tried it and we all came back with the comments that if, if you know where to hover in the right spot, it comes up relatively quickly. If you put in a search in your search box, it, it's not really totally effective. So we have some issues to do at home with the, the city's website. But if the department could at least uh, try to keep current the date of the meeting, location, and time, it would be very helpful to the public uh, that we're trying to draw it to come to our meetings. Thank you. Thank you. Any other county budget? Seeing none, we'll close that agenda item and move on to agenda item number five. Approval of minutes. Uh, commission meeting minutes from the March 15th. Questions, changes, comments, and then Commissioner Drew. Yeah, I 
actually, uh, while well, Commissioner McNeese is not here today, he's still doing his duties, and I actually got a phone call from him with two corrections on page seven. Uh, first paragraph, it talks about uh, Commissioner Howlshrum. It should be Hal, and it should be either ex or past commissioner. And then in the second paragraph, uh, the county commissioner's name is actually, her first name is Marcia, and last name is Berkeley. So those are the two corrections that Dave uh, has. So that should read past wildlife commissioner, Hal Trump. Right. Any other comments? Commissioner Ray? <coughs> Just two brief things. They're very good minutes. Um, as usual, one thing more clearly, I'm identify the point on page 22, and that would be an insert point where it says Commissioner Rain said he, he said and he, and then a third of the bottom paragraph, just a single of two lines, should be Commissioner Rain said for the first time in six years he is. That was clarify the point that was being made there, and also, so we read to be full, Commissioner Rain said for the first time in six years he is hearing immense wisdom, and it continues. Um, also on page 37, to clarify a point there, and, this, and I believe it, was, it would be a direct part of the full context, and this would be the third paragraph on the bottom, page 37. Um, second line, as, and currently it says as 15 to 20 employees is not, it would be as 15 to 20 mine employees living in Eureka is not major. That would be the appropriate context, and that would be appropriate to explain the context, and I believe the directional um, language. As 15 to 20 mine employees living in Eureka is not. So the wife is really out of context. The rest of that appears to fall the content. Um, we have to make a motion if nobody else has anything. Anybody else have anything? Public comment on the uh, agenda? Seeing no public comment, I'll bring it back to the commission. Move to approve as Changes that I add and that Commission Drew have. Second. We have a motion and second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passed unanimous. <coughs> Moving on to agenda item number six, check stamp request. Good morning. Morning. I'm uh, Mark Farman. Staff specialist with the Habitat Division of now. And just real quick before we cover the next two agenda items, uh, Chris DiCarlo, I'm, I'm sorry, Mike Zaraka, <laughs> and I <laughs> would, like, we would like to personally thank Commissioner McBeth and Mr. Dixon for being actively involved in the Overton County process. They went to all our scoping meetings and have uh, really helped move that process along. Uh, including uh, refereeing, as I understand it, the CAB meeting, refereeing some heated debates over some of our staff proposed strategies, which are designed to resolve conflicts between user groups. So we really appreciate your help on that. It makes a big difference. Okay, um, we're here today to talk about uh, our proposed duck and upland gamebird <coughs> stamp projects. Uh, we're seeking approval of the proposed FY14 projects, and hopefully you all received the related commission reports. Uh, there's a duck stamp report sent to you, uh, upland game bird report sent to you, and we know you're all interested in the Fallon Wood Duck project, so we sent uh, Dr. Chris Nicolai's report on that separately as a follow-up item. Uh, Suzanne and I have both had extra copies of all those items, if any of you uh, need an extra copy, please let us know. Um, today, uh, Mike's going to cover the duck stamp uh, projects in a little more detail. I'm going to give a quick overview of the budget status on each of these programs. I mean, there's the Wildlife Reserve Accounts, which include these two programs. 
And um, we also have today some staff experts. We have, in addition to Chris Nicolai, we have Russell Wilson, who, who's here from Landau, the two of the top waterfowl experts in the state. And uh, we also have Sean Espinosa from staff, who's here, and, as you know, he's an expert not only on sage grouse, but the, uh, the other upland game bird species that are talked about in this, this report. So if you uh, turn to page 11 in your duck stamp, Report. I just wanted to briefly give you an overview of where we are budget-wise for the duck stamp program. Page 11 gives you a, a very brief overview. Uh, at the beginning of FY13, we had roughly $510,000 in that account. Uh, today, we're seeking approval of $142,950 for FY14 projects. If you assume a full use of that money, which is conservative, we typically, right now, we've really stepped up our efforts. We're spending roughly 85 to 90 percent of what we've been approving in the past. So we really have stepped up the efforts to spend the money. So if you assume full use of the money, our estimates are that we'd be roughly at 400,000 remaining balance at the end of FY14. <coughs> So before I turn it over to Mike to talk a little bit about duck stamp projects, are there any questions regarding the overall program or the budget status? Okay, Mike. Thank you, Chairman Rob, uh, Vice Chair Drew, all commissioners. For the record, Mike Zarotka, Wildlife Staff Specialist for the Department of Wildlife. I oversee the Wildlife Management Area System. Uh, first thing I'd like to cover is before the budget, um, there's a few pages of work that had been completed in fiscal year 13. <clears throat> the Overton Farming Project continues to benefit the WMA. We currently have approximately 120 acres in production with Stan Hardy under our farming lease agreement down there. Feedback from hunters and other users of the area has been positive on the conditions and productivity of those fields. We also have projects that have replaced water control structures uh, at the Overton Wildlife Area, and a similar project that will take place over at the Carson Lake and Pasture later this year. These projects will allow us to efficiently manage water levels and conserve water supplies at these areas. At the end of those summaries, there's a couple projects that uh, have been delayed. I think is how they were labeled. So, for the members that have been on the commission the last few years, <coughs> you'll recall the pond leveling projects that have been carried over uh, with little progress done on them. The reason for this is we've, we've experienced a high level of personnel turnover in the wildlife areas over the last year and a half. With new managers in place at these wildlife areas, we have new ideas and new plans for doing some of these, uh, some of the leveling work. Later this fall, I hope to uh, get together with the new wildlife area supervisors and do some conceptual planning. And we hope to submit new proposals for pond leveling in FY15. Another project is the Key Pittman <coughs> WMA prescribed bird or the prescribed fire. Since we have spending authority on these projects until November of this year, there's a chance that we may get some of that work completed. What we need to do is uh, what we'd like to have is NDF and their conservation crews from the Pioch camp um, help us install a fuel break on the north end of Nesbitt Lake. Um, the, the burn would take place next spring, but we need to do the fuel break this fall when water levels are low. So we're hoping to get that done, but with the likelihood of a busy fire season this year in the state, we're not sure if NDF can commit um, to those commitments just yet. So um, that was the, the FY13 projects. Moving on into the proposed project for the upcoming year, FY14. <clears throat> we have continuing water conservation projects at Overton. Uh, we're going to replace water control structures and open concrete ditches that have become uh, worn out over the years. We're going to turn those into pipe uh, to move water. In addition to the prescribed burn at uh, Key Pittman, we're also going to do uh, one at the Mason Valley Wildlife Area to improve wetland habitat conditions. And then 
There's a, a number of projects that include vegetation control at many of the wildlife areas around the state. Um, typically, we have two types of vegetation control projects. One, of, one is the noxious weeds, which are listed by the Department of Agriculture. As a, as a landowner, state law requires that you control noxious weeds found on your properties. And then the other type of control would be the undesirable aquatic vegetation that is typically found uh, around the water impoundments and reservoirs. This would include hard stand bulrush and cattails. These treatments allow us to achieve management goals in these wetlands. Uh, desired outcome is typically 70% of open water to 30% vegetative cover which is listed on many of the conceptual management plans that we have in place uh, for our wildlife areas. So that was just a brief overview of uh, projects that we have proposed for FY14. That was all I had. Is there any questions that we can answer on these? Any questions? Commissioner Ray. Um, one that we're going to get too deep into the individual projects is um, we had that question that was brought up, and it actually was mentioned uh, in the minutes that Dennis Drew mentioned there. Of the, Mr. Trump was asking about the legality of the Wood Duck project, due to, I believe it was in reference to the old, um, whether it's migratory or not. Did staff ever have a chance to look at that and make a determination on that? Uh, Chris, do you mind answering that question? Jeremy or Russell, whatever you Or Russ, either one. Russell is me. Russell is me with the Department of Wildlife. Um, yeah. Wood ducks are classified by, by federal regulation as migratory waterfowl, whether or not an individual or a small population migrates. The material to the classification as a migratory waterfowl. State law um, states that any bird listed in federal regulations migratory waterfowl and by state law also migratory waterfowl. So legally they're, they're migratory birds. Mr. Chairman, we plan on going through these one at a time. I was hoping. Yeah. You know, just, uh, that's your request. You know, if you briefly go, since some of them don't have any questions at all, I'm just tough love and I just kind of shot down the whole throat. Do you have any in particular you'd like to pick up so you don't them one by one? Well, if, 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 if commissioners have anything they want to ask, for, I think we should go to it that way. But, uh, I yeah, I mean, I, there's a couple, I, I a couple questions on them, but I don't really want to go out of order, you know, if we're going in order. Go ahead and go out of order. Right? Go ahead and go out of order. For record, I'm allowed to go out of order in this meeting. Okay. Well, I, I think, I, I mean, I'm looking at it, and I, I just don't know each individual uh, wildlife management areas. Uh, we're going to take it out to public comment if CAPS have any comment on this. We're going to get people more directly involved with these wildlife management areas to speak to them. And uh, I, I kind of like to get some cap input before I start to get breaking this way too much. Um, first, with the projects involving the pond uh, leveling we were talking about earlier, could get a little bit more in depth in the costs of those and timeline on that. And you know, following that, I'd like to do more stuff about the Wood Duck project. Okay. <clears throat> For the record, Mike Zarate of the Department of Wildlife. The palm leveling projects were uh, initially set up for the Overton Wildlife Area, Key Pittman Wildlife Area, Kirch, and the Mason Valley Wildlife Areas. Uh, what was proposed to do was over time, a lot of these impoundments and, and ponds get um, uh, sediment, uh, gets uh, do runoff. In them. So what we wanted to do was deepen some ponds, um, remove some of the sediment, and actually you know, level them to make for a better hunting experience, as opposed to having drop off and uh, you know, deep parts of ponds and, and shallow areas. So that's a similar projects. All the wildlife areas, all four, have, uh, have projects. For Overton, we were going to do um, deep 
the Pintail and Wilson Pond area at Key Pippin. We were going to do the North Pond up by the up by the headquarters for the residents. Uh, Mason Valley, we weren't sure yet. We were discussing a few different areas of leveling. <coughs> out at uh, Kirch, we were going to do some work out at the old place. Here. So as, as I was under the impression that most of this was going to be done over past years, are these new places in the same ponds? Or as you're trying to talk about earlier, I think, was some of it didn't get done, and so now we're going to redo, we're going to do that, didn't get done previously? So I'm looking at it, well, didn't we always spend money to do that? No, we had never uh, spent any money. We did have some funds set aside to do initial survey work. Um, ideally, we would use a, a company for Ducks Unlimited would probably offer the biologists and uh, some bi biological input and the survey work. So we would typically use them. But money for surveying was set aside, but was never used. And then on the wood duck project, I mean, I see quite a bit of uh, paperwork on it, but you know, we had some uh, you know, pretty good promises and hopefully some results. And what results would we be expecting in what time frame? When are we going to have a good conclusion? Good morning, Commission. Uh, Chris Nikolai, Nevada Waterfowl Association. Um, as I mentioned last night, I had a couple talks. If you guys wanted to load them up, I don't know if it's a good time to just let me know. Um, yeah. Any questions? Just, uh, you know, we've been we talked, this project's been ongoing now for more than a decade, right? We're at the project as it's The project. And so what what is new with the project now, and what are we looking at for the future of the project? Is this, are we talking still another, I'm trying to remember from the last time we had the stock, was we're still out three or four more years in this project? Three more this? years for the harvest experiment. And, and then, then? Probably a year of writing up the data. So at four years we should have, and what are you expecting? What are you seeing? No, you want me to load up the talk? I don't know. I mean, the brief, the right the, the, the it's up to brief you version you can hear. Let, let's take a uh, five minute break. Load it up. Talk. Uh, we discussed this last night at the marriage because we did fund it $10,000. We proposed funding at ten thousand dollars. And the amount of uh, volunteer time uh, working towards the possibility of a splash limit, all kinds of things are incorporated with this project. I, I think it's one of the better projects that I've been I have knowledge of the department's been a part of. So let's load it up and see it. So, so. Thank you. 